Okay, welcome back. Happy Wednesday. Uh, today we are going to cover something called solving systems by algebraic methods. Uh, we just had our second quest and I actually wanted to look at one question from that quest. So here it is. It's the very last question on the last page. It said, find the equation of a line that is perpendicular to the line y equals 4 and passes through the point negative 3, 5. So a bunch of folks uh, said, okay, I know that uh, perpendicular um, means that the slope is the opposite reciprocal. Right? Perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite and reciprocal. Change the sign and flip the number. And uh, that is all true. And then uh, some folks said, okay, so the slope of this line is 4. And so then the slope of the perpendicular line is negative 1 over 4, opposite reciprocal. Right? And that's not right, because the slope of that line is not 4. This is not y equals 4x. This is just y equals 4. And the fact that there's no x in that equation cues me into the concept that this is one of our special case lines. It's either vertical or horizontal. y equals any number. Which one is it? y equals any number is horizontal. That's the only information you need to get from y equals 4. 4 is irrelevant. That is a horizontal line. So what word describes a perpendicular to that line? X equals vertical, right? Perpendicular to that line is a vertical line. So all of this translates to find the equation of a vertical line that passes through the point negative 3, 5. So this is no good. And instead, uh, we just write down our answer. Um, X equals, uh, and what is X at that point? Negative 3. So that's the answer to the question. Just x equals negative 3. So that was a 7-point question. Now, if you uh, wrote x equals anything, you got 3 or 4 points, I forget. Um, if you did this funny thing here with the green, where you got the slope and the negative reciprocal, but you still managed to find a line that went through the point, negative 3, 5, I gave you 3 points for that. So I didn't take off all 7. If you hit the point, you got 3. If you had the right um, the right equation uh, form, x equals, you got 4. But anyway, that was a 7-point question. Any questions on that one? Okay. So generally speaking, the uh, results on the quiz were good. Some people did great. Some people did not so great. But on average, uh, I think we're doing pretty well. Um, but again, if you have individual questions, just see me individually. Lots of resources uh, as you think about studying for the test. Um, the math studio peer tutoring my office hours with each other. Uh, but anyway, our test is coming up October 16. We'll be here before we know it. Okay, so let's jump into the new stuff again on page 85. So here we go at the top. Uh, it says in this lesson we solve systems. Remember system is just uh, more than one equation for us. It's always going to be two equations with x and y. We solve systems algebraically, not graphically, which is what we did in our previous lesson using two methods, substitution and elimination. So if you recall, this is going way back now before the quest, um, when we were given the equations of two lines, like x plus y equals 10 and 3x minus y equals 7, something like that, you would graph the one line and you would graph the other line. And then where do we see the solution to that system of equations? This is where they intersect, right? That right there is what we were looking for. And we called that the solution. And whatever x, y you got at that one point of intersection, when you plug it into the first equation, you would get something that was true. And when you plug it into the second equation, you would also get something that is true, OK? But there are some downsides to that graphical idea of solving systems of equations. One of them is that graphing lines takes a little bit of time. It's not the fastest process in the world. More importantly, um, anything we do graphically is going to be an estimation. And there were problems that you guys did the other day in this activity where the answer that you got wasn't exactly the same as the answer in the key or wasn't exactly the same as the answer your neighbors got because your graphs were slightly different from each other. It's understandable. So one, the biggest weakness of the graphical method is that it's inexact. And so today we're going to talk about two methods that are exact, but will get us, uh, you know, the same kinds of the solutions to the same kinds of problems.
Okay, so two different techniques, both solving the same kinds of problems. Here's our first system of equations, 6x minus 2y equals negative 3, and 4x plus y equals 5. Now, I typed all of this stuff up, but we're going to ignore all that, and you should know that if you want to come back uh, after class and take a look at it, the reference is there. Instead, if you guys could go to the space at the bottom of this page, and maybe just recopy uh, these two equations, so you have a little bit of space at the bottom of the page. I think it's enough. Just copy those two equations for me. Those are the same two equations that are at the top of the page. And so what we're going to do is solve that system of equations, but uh, we're not going to rely on a graph at all. We're going to do something brand new called the substitution method. So here we go. Okay, step number one is to take one of these two equations and solve it for one of the variables. One of the equations for one of the variables. And we have choices here. You could solve the first equation for x, like do some work to get x by itself in that first equation, or you could solve the first equation for y, or you could solve the second equation for x, or you could solve the second equation for y. You could pick any of those, they all work. Sometimes, some of those choices are better than others. So don't write this down because I'm going to make one of the worst choices first and then we'll make the best choice and do that one. Suppose I decide to solve that first equation for x. Don't write this. I need to move the negative 2y over by doing what to both sides? Adding it. Don't write this. 6x equals negative 3 plus the 2y, yes? And still solving for x, what do I do to both sides? Divide by 6. Don't write this either. x equals negative 3 plus 2y over 6. Yes, we have correctly solved for x. Totally fine. But this is pretty messy, isn't it? I mean, it's a big old fraction. There's no getting around it. We did what we had to do. Um, but we had to divide by 6 at the end because there was a 6 in front of this x. What if instead we had decided we were going to solve that first equation for y? What would we have to divide by in the last step when we solve for y? Negative 2, maybe, right? Still fractions. What if you solved the second equation for x? What would you have to divide by? 4, which is still fractions. What if you solved the second equation for y? Well, you don't have to divide by anything because there's an invisible 1 in front of the y. That's the winner. So none of this stuff here, but instead we're going to solve that second equation for y. So do write this down. Need to move the 4x over by doing what? Subtracting from both sides, so y equals 5 minus 4x. Okay, next step. Take that thing and substitute it into the other equation. We have used the second equation. We are going to substitute into the other equation, the first equation. So what we're going to do is rewrite this entire thing. But when I get to the y, I'm just going to leave it blank. So copying that first equation, it says 6x minus 2 and I got to the y, I'm going to leave it blank, give yourself a little bit of space there, equals, and then I'm copying the negative 3. Everybody see, first equation has been copied in its entirety except for the y. And now we're going to put something in that blank space that is exactly the same as y. And according to what we did up above, y is exactly equal to 5 minus 4x, so I get to put 5 minus 4x right here. Yes? That is equal to y. So all I have to do is substitute it for y. But I left something out that we got to have. We need parentheses because y used to be just a single term, but now y is represented by two terms. And there's going to be some multiplication happening there. The rest of this problem is fairly routine. So we got to pause and make sure we understand that step. That's the most important one. That is an exact replica of the first equation, but instead of the y, we have put something that is exactly equal to y. So it's fair, right? But we had to bring parentheses in. Everybody see it? Okay, the thing that makes this equation much better than the first two, how many variables are in that equation? Just one. Much better. In fact, I could have given this equation to you on the first day of this class and said, hey, go solve it, and you would have had no problem doing it, right? So like the rest of this is, is somewhat old, it's ordinary for us. That was the new stuff. Okay, so we'll distribute here. Uh, 6x minus 10 minus 8x equals negative 3.
This pause is me waiting for you to tell me what I did wrong. Positive eight, why? Everybody see that? Negative two, negative four X. Easy mistake to make. Okay, then we'll just combine terms here on the left-hand side. I see 14 X's minus 10 equals negative three. I'll bring that up here, add 10 to both sides. 14 X equals uh, what, seven. And then divide both sides by 14. And as always, we reduce if we can. X equals one half. Okay. Um, in many algebra problems, when you find X, you are done and you move on. Are we done? We are not done. What else do we need to find? We need to find the Y. Remember, this, there's like some geometry thing happening here, right? Like, I drew this picture. We've got two lines that crisscross each other. We are looking for the point of intersection, both coordinates. We just found that the point of intersection happens at x equals a half, but we still need to find y. So we don't get to stop here. Okay, so how do we find y? We take our x equals a half, and you plug it into any equation that has both x and y in it. Any equation that has both x and y in it. Um, so uh, we could go to this first equation here. It's got x and y. We could go to the second equation. It's got x and y. The best place to go is the equation where it's already got y by itself because we're trying to find what y equals. So if we just plug a half in there, we just have to do a little bit of arithmetic to find out what y equals as opposed to plugging y, uh, sorry, uh, x equals a half here. Y would still be buried, right? We'd still have to do some algebra to solve for y. So let's go to that last spot right here. So y equals five minus four, and then instead of x, what do we put? Half. Uh, half of four is two, five minus two is three. So y turns out to be three. So then our solution, x equals a half, y equals three. We'll write that as an ordered pair, one half comma three. Any questions on that one? Okay, um, so before we do the other technique, uh, I wanna point out one common mistake that I see folks make sometimes. Um, our substitution step was way back here. We solved one equation for one letter, and then we substituted into the other equation, right? We changed that y into a five minus four x. Sometimes I see students uh, substitute into the same equation that they used in the first place. And so if you went to try to uh, substitute this value of y right back in here, let's see what happens. Uh, all right, do this in blue, okay. So the second equation I'm copying, it says four, you don't need to write this. It says 4x plus, and then I'm going to leave a blank, and then equals 5. Everybody see that's the second equation? 4x plus, and then I'm leaving a blank right there for the y, equals 5. And according to our work, what can we substitute for y? 5 minus 4x, right? That's legitimate. Instead of y, we put 5 minus 4x. So we'll put that. Okay, and then something very strange happens on the left-hand side. What happens? The 4x's cancel, and all of a sudden this equation that I was going to solve for x doesn't have any x's in it. What remains in that equation? The x's cancel, but there's still stuff left. What does the equation become? 5 equals 5, right? There's still an equation there, but it's really weird that the x's disappeared. Okay, 5 equals 5 is true, but it's not particularly helpful. And if you substitute into the same equation you use to solve for one of the variables, you will always get an equation that is true, but not helpful because the variable will all disappear, okay? So there's nothing wrong with doing that, but it's not gonna head you any place good, right? So again, this is all written up above. Solve one equation, 
for one letter, letter substitute into the other equation. All right, so that's everything to say about um, substitution. Let's move to the next page, 86. And we are going to do something called the elimination method or the uh, addition subtraction method. Okay, uh, same idea as before. I think we've got enough space down here. Can you guys copy in the space at the bottom of this page? Those two equations, they're the same ones at the top of the page. And just like before, all of this is written out in text up above. You can read it later if you wish, but we're just going to do this problem from scratch together here. Okay, so first thing to say, uh, the technique we're about to do solves exactly the same kinds of problems as the technique from the previous page. We're still solving systems of equations. It is still two equations with x's and y's in them. We could very well use substitution on this thing, or we could use the new technique. They both solve the same kind of problem, and they both get you the same answer at the end of the day. If you wanted to use substitution, the technique from the previous page, uh, would solving the first equation, would that bring uh, fractions into the problem? Solve for x in that first equation? We would have to divide by 9 at some point. If you solve for y in the first equation, we'd have to divide by 6. Solving for x there is division. Solving for y there is division. So in this case, there isn't any way to avoid uh, bringing fractions into the problem if we do the substitution method. But with this new technique we're about to do, we're going to avoid fractions until the very end of the problem. So let's give it a shot. What we are going to do is multiply the first equation by some number and the second equation by some number, and then some magical stuff is going to happen. So uh, don't worry about where these numbers come from for right now. But uh, I'm going to say we're going to multiply the first equation by 2, and we're going to multiply the second equation by negative 3. Again, those are magic numbers for right now, but in about a minute, it will become clear where those numbers came from. But for right now, let's just see what happens when we multiply these numbers that I pulled out of a hat. Multiplying both sides of that equation by 2. So the 2 hits the 9x and gives 18x, plus the 2 hits the 6y, times that guy is 12y. All too often I see people leave the 5. What should it be? 10. We are multiplying both sides of the equation by 2. You can't just do something to one side without doing it to the other. All right? Okay. It's not clear how that equation is any better than the original first equation. In fact, you could argue it's worse because the numbers are all bigger, but at least it's equivalent, right? I mean, it's like the same line if you were to graph both of these equations. Okay. Second equation by negative 3. What do we get? Negative 18x plus 15y, again, negative times negative is positive, equals negative 27. OK. And so here is where the magic happens. We are going to add these two equations. I'll start on the right-hand side. Adding negative 10, uh, sorry, 10 and negative 27, that looks like negative 17, equals, how many y's do we have when we add up that column? 27 y's, oops, 27 y's. How many x's do we have when we add up that column? No x's. You could put 0x if you want, I'm not going to write anything. So the equation that we have now is 27y equals negative 17 which is a heartbeat away from being solved, right? This equation is much better than any of the other ones up on the board. So we'll solve this equation, and then we'll talk about like what made the magic happen before. So what is y equal to here? Good, negative 17 over 27. That's it, don't go to the calculator. Fractions are perfectly good, you don't need decimals. And we can't reduce, so we're done. All right, so what made this thing tick? Well, I built 18 and negative 18. I made that on purpose. How did I build that? Well, I looked over at the 9x and the 6x, and I said, what do both of those things go into? In more mathematical terms, what is the lowest common multiple or least common multiple of 9x and 6x? You could multiply. You could do 54. 9 and 6, for sure, both go into 54. But it's in our best interest to make things as small as possible. 
So what smaller number do 9 and 6 both go into? 18. And so I asked myself, what did I have to do to the 9x to turn it into an 18? I had to multiply that by 2. What did I have to do to the 6x to turn it into 18? I had to multiply by 3. But I really wanted the signs to be opposite each other, so I did negative 3 there so that they would cancel when I added. Fair? So that's the technique. You multiply one equation by a number, multiply the other equation by a number, with the purpose of canceling when you add. So you make those things exactly the same, but one positive and one negative. All right. Um, so that's uh, y. We still need to find x. So there's two ways to find x. Uh, we could find x in exactly the same way uh, we did on the previous page. Once we knew one variable, we substitute it in. I'll show you. Um, I think we are right here. Once we knew that x was equal to a half, we just went into that equation and we changed the x to a half right there. And then we just did the arithmetic and we found y, right? So once you know one, you just plug into an equation and you find the other. All right, so that is a perfectly good technique. I'm going to show you what it looks like, and then I'm going to show you what I think is a better technique. Um, you can saw, uh, substitute into either of the two equations. Uh, we know that y is negative 27 over, sorry, negative 17 over 27. Uh, up above, it's all typed out, so we're just going to read it. But we're going to substitute into this bottom equation. Change that y to negative 17 over 27 and figure out what x has to be. Okay, so here it is. You don't need to write anything down. So there's the second equation. We change the y into negative 17 over 27. How do we multiply these two things together? First, this is 5 over 1. And then how do you multiply fractions? Straight across. OK, so 5 times 17, that's 85. 1 times 27, that's 27. Negative times negative, that's plus. Okay, we are still trying to solve for x, so we need to move the 85 27 over to this side by doing what? Subtracting it from both sides, and there it is, 9 minus 85 over 27. This is really 9 over 1. What do we need to build in order to subtract those fractions? Same denominator. What's the lowest common denominator here? 27. And so we multiply this denominator, that's a 1, multiplied by 27 and therefore also multiply the top by 27. Apparently that's 243 over 27. And now that they have the same denominator, what do we do? We subtract straight across 243 minus 85. That's the 158. The denominator just gets copied. There's a 27. Okay, and now we got to solve for x. So what do we do to both sides here? Divide by 6, right? We divide both sides by 6. But that's actually kind of awkward because then you got this fraction divided by 6, right? So another option would be to multiply by 1 over 6. And by that, that will cancel the 6s. So is that reciprocal idea? So we can multiply both sides by 1 over 6. And so that is what's written right here. And then how do we multiply fractions? We go straight across. Turns out we can actually reduce here. Uh, 6 and 158 are both even. So you could uh, divide them both by 2. So that becomes a 79, and the 6 becomes a 3. And then we'll go straight across. And we get 79 over 81. Easy peasy. All right, so that is the right answer, and that is one perfectly valid technique. But a few years ago, one of my students showed me a better way, and now I show you a better way. The better way that she proposed was to just start this problem over. We chose to get rid of the x's. What if we just choose to get rid of the y's instead? Let's try this. Focusing on the y's, so we've got the original equations. Uh, in fact, why don't we write them over here if you have space. Uh, 9x plus 6y equals 5. 6x minus 5y equals 9. Now we're going to focus our attention on eliminating those y's. So I see a 6y and I see a 5y. What's the lowest common multiple of 6 and 5? 30. We're going to turn them both into 30. What do we need to multiply the first equation by to turn that y into 30y? Multiply that equation by 5. Yeah. Second equation. I'm trying to turn it into 30y. What do you multiply it by? 6. Last thing is the signs. I want them to be opposite signs. Are they going to be in the current form? Top one will be positive 30y. Bottom one will be negative 30y. That's exactly what I want. If it didn't work out the way I want, 
I would make one of them negative. But I think we've got it exactly in the right form at the moment. OK, so let's carefully distribute there up on both equations. So 5 times 9x, that's 45x plus 30y, that's what we built, equals 25. Don't forget to multiply both sides by the magic number. Distribute the 6 through the second equation. 36x minus 30y equals 54. And then we add these two equations up. How many x's? Eighty one is good. Eighty one x. How many y's? None. That's what we built. Equals. Add on the right hand side. Seventy nine. And so one last step to solve for x. Divide everything by 81. So we get 79 over 81. And so I want you to compare the difficulty of that part of this problem to what I had typed out and what we just went over with all the fractions. Which way do you like better? This way. Me too. I, and, and I have nobody to thank but that one student a few years ago who said, hey, couldn't we just do this instead? As soon as she said it, I said, of course. That's so much better than what I've been teaching. Yeah. Okay, and don't forget to write uh, the final answer here. Uh, 79 over 81, that's the x, comma, negative 17 over 27. So that is called, yeah, Kara. Uh, just so that when you add them up, uh, they cancel. So 30y plus negative 30y cancels. Um, there are uh, other places where uh, they would have no problem making it uh, both the same, and then they would say subtract the two equations. 30y minus 30y cancels. 45x minus 36x, that would be 9x. 25 minus 54, I don't know, negative 20, what is that? Negative 29. So totally fine to make them exactly the same and then subtract. But I, I've had a, a bunch of students who make careless subtraction errors, and so I've just started, uh, I've just decided, <laughs> yeah, I've just decided to, to make them opposite so we can add every time. Yeah. Okay, uh, all right, so that is the uh, elimination method or the addition subtraction method. All right, so uh, last topic, last new topic for today um, is uh, up here in number four. So it says, usually two lines intersect at a single point, but the quest before the quest, we had a couple of pictures we saw where we had special cases. So one, one way that two lines could fail to intersect at a point is what? What kinds of lines could I draw where they wouldn't intersect at a single point? Could draw two parallel lines, in which case how many points of intersection do they have? Zero, right? So there'd be no solutions to that system of equations because there's no points that are simultaneously on both lines. There was one other special case where the two lines don't intersect at one point, and that was where they intersect at every point, where you drew the same line twice, right? And so we had infinitely many solutions there because any point that was on one line was automatically on the other. So if you're drawing a picture, um, if you're drawing a picture, you have uh, the visual information that says, hey, maybe we're in one of the special case cases parallel lines or the same line twice. But the two techniques that we're doing here, substitution and then the more recent elimination, we don't have that visual. So there must be some other information we're gonna pick up on that will tell us, hey, we're in one of those two special cases, parallel lines or the same line twice. So let's take a look at them here. We are going to solve both of these brand new systems of equations and we're gonna see something funny happen and then we'll make some conclusions. So we're gonna do substitution here. Uh, the first equation is already solved for y, so I'm happy with that. And we are going to substitute, instead of the y in the second equation, we're going to substitute 2x plus 1, okay? So I am copying the second equation. I have a 2x plus 3 on the right-hand side. And instead of the y, what can we put? 2x plus 1. So that substitution is a little bit funny-looking but it's still the same technique, even though it looks a little bit weird. 
we just change the y on the left hand side to 2x plus 1. Okay, and then if we choose to get the x's on the same side, let's subtract 2x from both sides, and what happens? Subtract 2x here, subtract 2x here, what do we get? No x is left over. So what remains in the equation? 1 equals 3, which is troubling for me as a math guy. So it's weird in that the x has disappeared, and then extra weird that I get this nonsense equation at the end. Let's pause on that one. We'll come back to it in a minute and try part b. Again, we're going to substitute. Again, we're given a gift in that the first equation is already solved for one letter. So we are going to change this y right here into what? Into 2x plus 1, right? Because that's what y is equal to. So here we go. This equation is 6x minus 3, and then I'm going to leave a blank space, equals negative 3. And so instead of the y, we're going to put 2x plus 1. Notice that we had to bring parentheses in. Okay, let's distribute that negative 3. 6x minus 6x minus 3 equals negative 3. And then on the left-hand side, we'll combine terms. And what happens? The x's cancel. And we get what equation? Negative 3 equals negative 3. Still weird in that the x has disappeared, so we don't have an opportunity to solve for x. But at the very least, we got an equation that was true, as opposed to the nonsense up above, where 1 equals 3. So here's what we do when we're, we are in one of these cases. When solving a system of equations, if the variables all disappear, that's our clue that we are in one of the two special cases, two parallel lines or the same line twice. If you end up a, like with a false statement, such as 7 equals negative 2, then there are no solutions to the system. It was two parallel lines. We get something false, no solutions, two parallel lines. I'm not going to use this system, uh, this symbol, but uh, the book will. Uh, that looks like a zero with a line through it. Uh, it represents the empty set. That is to say the set with nothing in it. So if I said, hey, tell me the set of all things that are solutions to that system of equations, you would say, well, there's nothing in that set because there are no solutions to that system. So your book is going to use that symbol for the empty set. If you end up with a true statement, such as 4 equals 4, then there are infinitely many sys, uh, solutions to the system. That was a case where it was the same line drawn twice. All right, let's make our conclusions way back up here. 1 equals 3. How many solutions to that system of equations? None. No solutions. That is what you write. The book will use the fancy symbol for the empty set. I will write no solutions. Those were two parallel lines never touching each other, so no points of intersection. How about the negative 3 equals negative 3? How many solutions? How many? Infinitely many. That's what we write. Infinitely many. Infinitely many solutions. It wasn't clear, but those two equations represent exactly the same line when you go to graph them. And so there are infinitely many points of intersection because they're the same line. Okay, any questions on the two special cases? So the last thing we'll say here before we jump to the activities. Um, again, the special cases, uh, the, the clue is that all of the variables disappeared, right? Like we subtracted 2x from both sides and all the x's vanished. Here the 6x's just canceled each other. So when that happens, we're in one of two special cases. However, if you remember, way back when here for substitution, in this case, we solved the second equation for y. And where did we substitute that thing? Into which equation? Into the other one, into the first one. But what happened when we accidentally substituted into the same equation that that one came from? What happened down here? What canceled out? The variables canceled out. And we got no x's, and we got 5 equals 5. And now we just learned, if you see 5 equals 5, hey, that's one of our special cases. There's infinitely many solutions. No, it just means we made a mistake. I mean, like, 
do the substitution method the right way and we got no problems but if you do it the wrong way now all of a sudden we have this new information that says oh that's just one of our special cases it's not okay all right so uh, if we go to the next page uh, i will point out the uh, instructions here are a little bit unusual so uh, there's going to be some words about apples and oranges you're going to carefully write a system of linear equations two equations you're going to solve that system using substitution, meaning you're going to get the complete answer, x equals 15, y equals 7, or whatever it is. But then you're going to solve exactly the same system, again, using elimination. And again, you're going to get x equals 15 and y equals 7. You're going to get the same answer twice. But I just want to point out, I'm not, I don't want you to choose here. I want you to do both techniques on all three of these problems, okay, for practice. Um, you might have time to finish all three of these, even though you're doing them all twice. Uh, there's lots of problems in the even more practice section for us to practice with. So let's get started here.